Hi everyone, my name is King IV, and this is a custom ACL workshop on how to apply variables to your ACL project. And in a previous video, we, we covered understanding variables and the different components. So I recommend that you check that out, or if you already know variables or checked out that video or both, uh, then stay tuned and we're gonna show you how to apply, I'm gonna show you how to apply uh, variables into your ACL project. So let's get started. So here I have the PCAR transaction. I'll include a link in the description so you can take a look and, and figure out and follow along with me. So here we're gonna open the table. Nothing too complicated here. And then simply the first scenario says sample 1% of the records. So here I'm gonna go count. And then I'm gonna create a new variable called sample size equals count one, which is the name of the variable that gets kicked out from the count times 0.01. And then I'm simply just gonna do this quick sample. So I'm gonna go sample record on sample size by record to AV1 sample with open. So let's run that. So I run that. I take a look here. My sam my count is 163,000. Uh, my 1% of that would be 1,633, uh, which is actually the case. Oh, good. This next one is a little bit more interesting. Here we're gonna do, we have a materiality of 10,000 and we want us, we want our sample size to be the dollar value divided by my materiality, randomly select these samples. So here I'm gonna go materiality equals 10,000 and we could easily just make this a dialog box and ask people what they use what the, as their sample size. So here I'm gonna go total, in this case I'm going to total the transaction amount and that's gonna create a temporary variable called total one. So you'll notice the pattern here. Equals total one uh, divided by materiality, which is the variable we defined up above. And we're simply just gonna do the same thing here, since we called it our variable here. So we'll run it, and then we'll see 3,139. We'll take a look here. We'll do this total. We'll see 31,339,000. And if we just take these last, these first four numbers, it matches to our sample size here. Randomly selected too, so that's the, the beauty of it. And then here, and now we can extract uh, everything greater than three standard deviations from the mean. So this one's actually very interesting. So here, I'm just gonna simply run some statistics so I can show you what these uh, variables look like. So here, oh. Statistics on transaction amount. Sorry, I forgot to add that. So now we have all these variables. So here we have the average, and uh, actually I gotta include the standard deviation as well. So there you go. Now we have the standard deviation as well. So here, 454, the average right there. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go extract, or, or yeah, let's go extract fields all to Let's go AV3. I know it's not really a sample, but we're going to do it anyways. If, let's keep with the pattern, we're going to say transaction amount is greater than the average one plus standard dev one times three. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to apply it there. Perfect. So now there you go. We have uh, 2,000 records. This next one's a little bit trickier and not very common. Randomly select a sample, uh, rec a random record, extract all records with that division. So how are we gonna do this? So this one's pretty interesting. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use this locate record on, and locate record allows us to isolate just that one row so we can pull the particular variable out. In this case, then we're gonna say, it's gonna ask us, um, actually before we do this, we're gonna do count, and then here we're gonna go locate record, and then we're gonna use this variable called random, and I recommend that you check it out if you don't know what it is. And it's basically gonna pick a number between uh, one and that random number, and then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say V division, so we're just gonna store the division, division name. There you go. And now we're gonna extract fields all to uh, AV4 sample, open, 
if v division if division equals quotation v division which is then going to call the variable as a string percent sign now if we let that run so you can see here now uh, now we have the division and it's exporting perfectly so now we have the parks and recs which is actually the big chunk of the the records here so uh, that's interesting let's do something a little bit more complex considering we had all these sample sizes so let's create a temporary record uh, based off of the results so here we're going to go extract fields all and we're going to extract fields and we're going to say even before this we're going to do a count i want to know how much each of these results so i'm going to say sample test and i'm going to go zero one as sample test and then i'm simply just going to take count one uh, and i'm going to say as sample size and I'm gonna call then I'm gonna call this table sample tracker. And then I'm essentially just gonna do the same thing here. Just change it, change the number from a zero one to zero two. I'm gonna do that there. Three and then four. So now if we do that. Oh, one thing I didn't factor was that it's going to take every record. So here, what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure that we only take one record. So we're going to use this first one on each of these. Because it was exporting one record for every record that was in the previous table, even though you weren't really pulling any data from there. So now here, now here you go. Now we have all of these values and all these totals, and we can even do something like this. For example, do total of sample size, and then now I'm gonna define a field. I'm gonna call sample percentage. Define field sample percentage. Compute it. I'm simply just gonna take the sample size uh, divided by the total one if I go down here oh oh this is circular reference I didn't really like that okay um, let's do this we have to store the value so let's store the value as uh, uh, sample total equals total one and we're simply essentially just going to then use sample total here. Oh, yeah. And I, as well, I have to open this table. So it knows what it's talking about. In this case, it's rounding. So we have to deal with all these slightly complex issues because of the weird rounding with this. This should fix it. So even if I just do something like this, open sample tracker so we can skip ahead. There you go, it has this percentage and we can even, for example, multiply it by 100 if you want to as well. I'm gonna show one last, actually let's do this, put it to four decimal places so we can see what it looks like with that, perfect. And then as well, then you can then put the whole thing in two decimal places um, after you've put it to four. There you go. I'm going to show you one last trick. Uh, and we're going to call this uh, V counter. And we're going to set it as one. And then we're going to go V counter used. And we're going to make that equal to. Essentially, we're going to make that equal to the string of v counter, which is going to be one. And then we're going to all trim that. We could make it two, for example. Let's just make it two just in case our sample size is ever that big. 
And then essentially we're going to use here, we're going to use, not left, a substring function. And we're going to say, actually, let's use a, um, a last function. And this is similar to my other videos, if you've checked this out on how to do this. And we're going to go say last two. And then essentially what we're going to do here is we are going to replace this variable right here with record used. Perfect. And then as well, we can use this to replace the counter. And now we've started automating some of our procedures. So here, every time you create a new sample, you just need to add this. So for example, and then I'm going to go here, change this to append. And just to, I'm going to be able to apply this. I just need to make sure that I continually add these at the top of each one before it calculates next. So we let that run. There you go. So now we can see how we've automated our procedures uh, using variables. And some of them are a little bit more complex. So I recommend that you rewind, pause it, follow along. Uh, but I'm just showing you how you can use these variables to really automate and build off so you don't have to rewrite, type the same script over and over again and really leverage the logic that's built into ACL. Thank you for watching. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.